In the previous TCA episode, we explained the concept of side effect in software development. And also, we fixed a side effect in our app when an item was deleted in the card, but add to card button didn't reset to zero in product list. Now it's time to pay while we want to purchase. For that, we will add the pay button to the card list. Let's start from card list view and add a button at the bottom. We just added a button that will stick at the bottom. There are two things missing right now. One is the action to send once we press the button, but we will figure out that in just a bit. And second is the amount to pay. We'll also calculate that. Let's jump to card list domain to add that logic. So far, we just have one property in the state, car items, and two actions, did press close button and car item. Today, we will add a lot more here. Let's start calculating the total amount. First, we need to add a variable to hold the total. Let's add total price. Just one comment here. I will keep things simple, but in a real app, the currency shouldn't be a double or float value like this one. But that's for another video. Don't worry about that in the meantime. Okay, now we need to calculate the amount. Let's add an action that will tell us that it's time to do that. Now we need to do something to calculate the total. Here's my idea. Let's get the items in the cart and calculate the total price using a reduce function. You may be familiar about what is a reducer function so far, but this one is like the most primitive of them. What we are doing is transforming a collection into a single value. That sounds really fancy, but what is actually happening is that we are initializing an internal value to zero that will hold the final result. Then we calculate the current total plus the product price by the quantity selected by the user. And with that, you will have the total price. Now we simply return none has effect and our total price logic is done. Now before continue, let's go to product list domain reducer and add a default case in card. We need this in the meantime just to compile without issues. Now let's go back to card list view and add total price to the pay button. We got two problems. One is that we need to round the decimals to avoid having X numbers of them in the screen. Let's create a computer property to filter that. Cool. Now the second problem is that we never called the action to calculate total. For this demo, let's use an appear event to call the action. Nice. We can see that total price is working now. However, there is one more problem. If I delete any of the items, the total price is not updated. We need to fix that. Go to car cell for a moment and let's see the button's action. It is sending delete car item to the reducer. And as you may remember from previous episodes, we are getting this action in card list domain too, because a collection of car items reducers are attached to this reducer. So far, what we are doing once we receive the lead car item action is just removing that item. But in this case, we have also to recalculate the total price again every time the user deletes a product from the card. To do that, we can just copy and paste the logic from get total price here. But you know that's not right, because we are duplicating code. I have a better idea. So far in this TCA series, we have just returned effect.none in every action case. But it turns out you can return an effect that can execute another action in isolation. In this case, we can return a custom effect that will execute getTotalPrice action again. In this way, you can create a chain of actions wrapped by effect object. Remember that effect is the core of DCA. It encapsulates side effects and make the reducer works with every case in isolation. Now, if we go to the card list preview, look how pay button is updated immediately once we delete an item from the list. Nice. However, we have another issue right here. If we delete all the items, the pay button is still working and that shouldn't happen. Let's disable the button if total price is zero. Let's add a boolean flag in card list domain. 
Now, the natural next step would be adding a case to verify that if paid button disabled should be true or false. However, I'm not going to create a new action in this case. The reason is because this logic doesn't make sense to be exposed publicly to other registers. This is just an internal verification after the calculation of total price. What I will teach you is a way to create a private action just to name it in some way. Let's create a static private function called verify pay button visibility. This function should receive the current state and return an effect. The effect will need two generic type parameters, the output type, which is action, and the failure case that we don't care right now, so we can declare it as never. Now we can simply verify if total price is zero or not to disable or enable the button, and return none effect as a final step. One more thing is that state parameter is immutable. To fix this, let's add in out annotation right before the parameter type. This is basically telling the caller that needs to provide the memory address of the variable instead of the value. And now the same state property from that reducer is available here. The last step here is returning the function from get total price. Look how the ampersand is passing the parameter address to this function. Now let's go to card list view and add disable modifier to the button. The color is optional, but it's good to visualize how it is disabled when no items are in the card. We have fixed a lot of edge cases already. Now let's work in the actual functionality to send this data to the server. Let's add the action to identify when pay button is pressed. And create a logic to do the payment. We will have to get the list of items from car items. and then execute a network call to send the data to the server. In order to do that, we will require an effect.task operation and an action that will receive the network response of type task result with either a success or failure. We already discussed this during the for each episode. I will leave it in the description if you want to deep dive on it. Okay, for our task result, let's use a simple string to manage a success response, confirming that operation was okay. Of course, that okay string is just a placeholder. We need a function that executes the work of sending the order to the server. And since the server is something from the outside world, it's time to finally use environment object again. I mean this environment, not the Swift UI property wrapper. We will create a closure that receives the list of items as parameter and return a string saying OK if everything is good. If everything goes wrong, it should throw an error. And since this will be a network call, we have to mark it as async. Having send orders closure created, we can now call it from did receive purchase response. Now, did receive purchase response needs to be evaluated for success and failure case. But now we got a compilation issue because we added a new parameter to environment. Let's fix that in product list domain. We need to provide the right method to execute send orders. And to do that, we will have to propagate that method through our product list environment, creating the same definition.
And now we can just provide the method from pullback parameter. That will produce another compilation issue. Here we are in the starting point of the app. Let's add a mock method for now and replace it once we cut the real API call. I know you might think this problematic. We are creating a change of dependencies that will be really annoying to maintain. And that's right, but don't worry about that. I will show you a great way to fix this in a later episode. Oh, we also need to fix the previews. Okay, project can compile successfully. Now let's add the action when the pay button is pressed. It's time to review that what we have done so far is okay. Let's run the app. Look how once we press the pay button, okay is received, meaning that our flow is correct. However, there are still many things to do here. First, the send order method is just a placeholder right now. It's not actually uploading something to the server. Second, think about when you press a pay button. You at least need to receive a confirmation alert to make sure this purchase was totally intentional and not a mistake. Third, once we press pay, we have to receive a success alert instead of just an OK string in the console but also closing the cart and resetting all the selected products to zero. And fourth, if something fails in the server, we need to receive an alert responding to the user that transaction failed. In that way, our application will provide a better user experience. But don't worry, we will explore that in the next episode. My name is Pete and this, this is Tips. Thanks for watching and have a great day.